Hello everybody, today we are going to train loops and we'll talk about the nested loops. Okay, let's start from training them. Let's make a program that will tell us how many digits are in, for example, integer number. So, when I create a number, for example, like that, and I will assign to it value 1234, I would like to see that our program will tell us that this guy has four digits, right? And when I increase the number, I want our program to tell us that it has five digits. Okay, and how to do something like that? Look, when I do something like 1234, and I divide it by 10, what will be the output of that operation. Let's see. As you can see it's 133. So when we divide two integer numbers we are losing the value after the point. If I divided it that way I would have the right result, right? But right now we lose that dividing two integer numbers give us the number that is one digit less. Okay, so it would be something like that. Now let's imagine situations like that and let's see what's going on. Now as you can see the last guy is 0, so 1 divided by 10 is 0. And now we can think like, hey, zero for the condition in loops means false. So, if I divide in condition that number, finally it will be zero, so our loop will end. And as you can see, that thing got how many times divided? Four times. How many digits we have here? Four digits. Great. So, we can create next variable for example number of digits and it will store the number of digits let's start from one and I will do something like that while we can divide number by 10 increase number of digits right and after it, we can send to the output the number and R has digits. But look, that thing here like I told you in the arithmetic lesson equals something like that. So it means that the number after that loop will be what? Zero. So right now oops, build and run. As you can see the number zero has four digits. <laughs> so we have to create temporary variable to restore that number here and now we'll divide the temporary variable because of that we will not lose the value that is in that number in that uh, variable here. and now the number 1234 has four digits and as you can see everything works fine now when I increase that number so it has six digits now it will tell us the right result so everything works fine now let's see how does it work so um, while loop is working like that that the, when the condition is zero it will stop execution right so at the beginning the temporary variable is what is let's back to that easier easier version 1034 and then we are dividing it by 10 so 
uh, well, uh, so it will be 132. Is 132 not equal to 0? <laughs> of course, it's not equal to 0. So we are going to increase number of digits. So right now, number of digits is equal to 2. And we will again check the condition. But first, we'll divide. And is 12 equal to 0? No. So let's increase number of digits. Is 1 equal to 0? No. So let's increase number of digits. And now we have 0. So is 0 equal to 0? Of course it's equal because uh, of that condition is false and will not increase number of digits anymore. So that's how it works. Okay, that was some training. Now let's talk about the nested loops. Where we can use them? What are nested loops? Well, nested means that we can have one loop in another loop. Look, we might want to, for example, write a program that will be sending to the output the multiplication table. So, how does multiplication table looks like? We have numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then we should uh, multiply 2 by all the guys here. So 2 multiplied by 1, hmm, 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 <laughs> 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 12, right? And now we can a bit format the thing here. So it would be more readable. And as you can see, uh, it is the multiplication table 2 on 10. But most time would like to have something like 10 on 10. So I have to what? Now, uh, multiply, multiply 3 by again deadline here. Remember, by again deadline here. Okay, so 3, um, 6, 9. 12, 15, and repeat, and now 4, <laughs> 5, <laughs> and just repeat that, right? Uh, right? So all the time we are doing what? Multiplying that guy here by that line here. How to uh, create that line here? We can create it by using, for example, a loop 4. So 4, and let's define integer number i, for example, let's start it. Uh, let's uh, assign value 1 to it, and if 1 is lower or equal to 10, keep do, uh, doing that instructions that are after the loop. And let's increase after each round that uh, variable. Now we can send to the output uh, i, and then add the space at the end, and let's see uh, our result. As you can see, we have here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, it just achieved that first line. Here. Let's get that guys into the multi-line comment because we don't need to see them now. So, we have that line and right now we would like to Multiply, for example, 2 by hmm, that guy, 3 by that guy, 4 by that guy. Again, so we want to multiply, for example, like that. So, and then we have what? The second line. If I multiply by that guy, I will have the third line, right? Okay. So we need something that will change here, like that. Okay. So, uh, how to achieve that? We can use the nest of the loops. So, I will have a loop inside a loop. So now, I will create another loop inside, another variable, another condition, and I will multiply i by e g. 
and now I will add here um, the end line like that and let's see how it works as you can see we have got right now all the lines here everything works fine well for me that thing is very easy but um, if you are starting it might be a bit confusing because we will try to explain it a bit slower right now let's imagine let's imagine how does it work at the beginning we have the variable i which equals 1 and we are PC right now so we have just defined that guy here we are checking the condition of course it's true because it's true we have to execute all the things that are here okay so we have to execute that loop here oh okay so I have loop here and I have to define the G okay uh, so I am uh, assigning also value to the G uh, which is 1. I'm checking the condition. Oh, condition is true, so I have to uh, execute that instruction here. So, I'm multiplying 1 by 1. Okay, so I have that guy here. Cool. Now, I'm increasing the G by 1, and I'm checking again condition. Is still lower or equal to 10? Of course it's true. So, um, I am multiplying 1 by Two. And it's 2. Now I'm again increasing, checking. Of course it's true. So uh, is uh, so 1 multiplied by, multiply by 3 is 3. And again, 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 and again, until we have something like that. Is 10 lower than equal to 10? Yes. So I am doing 1 multiplied by 10, which is 10. So we have the first line here. And I'm increasing g again is 11 lower or equal to 10 no so I am not going to execute that guy here anymore and I'm going to execute that thing here after it because I want to have that enter here right we want to have it formatted well and after it we are going back to what to that guy here and I am increasing it to 2 Cool. So right now I'm going to multiply 2 by what? Again, I am getting into this loop and again g is 1. So 1 multiplied by 2 is 2. And then 2 and then 3 and blah, 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 blah. Then 11. Blah, 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 blah. It's just repeating it and it's really cool because we don't have to make so many lines of code uh, it is just one two three four five six seven lines of code and it's working fine so it's really really great thing okay uh, what about the format look now it's a bit mm, not nice we could use something what is called see out with function. I will talk about functions later but look we can use something like that and right now it means that I want to have the with for between all the things that are going to the output. We don't need that space here now and let's see how does it work. As you can see it looks beautiful now. <laughs> And what is cool in that thing? We can change it a easily. Well, I would like to have, for example, 15 here and 12 here. Right? And we have multiplication table that has what? 15 rows and 12 columns. Okay, that's all in this lesson. Thank you very much.